Hello guys and welcome to Poser's Full Movie Recaps. Today, I'll show you a horror film about human experiments that goes horribly wrong. It all begins with Cole, a former head of security for NGen Pharmaceutical Industries, recording a confession on a computer about the horrible things that he did and the lives he destroyed while working for the company, while his face shows obvious physical attack wounds. Two months earlier, the director of NGen named Peter White introduced a new medicine called RAK-295, and refers to it as the new generation of performance-enhancing drugs. The newly developed supplements are supposed to help with everyday stress, and 30,000 people volunteered as test subjects when the program was launched. The director assures the public that they are confident in their products and after the volunteers are released in two months' time, the new supplements will be available for public consumption. A month later, NGen is facing numerous lawsuits due to the final stage of testing going awry. Many of the volunteers that participated in the testing experienced horrible side effects, which they suffered high fevers, vomiting, internal bleeding, and to some extreme multiple organ failure. Unable to help, Cole can only watch the suffering patients from the hospital window, while the scientist named Michael reports that every test patient is accounted for, except for a woman named Angela Mills. Cole has been commanded to find the woman by any means because if she isn't affected, she might hold the secret of finding a solution to the company's predicament. On the other hand, Angela's husband Joe is released from jail after he's been accused of killing a 14-year-old kid in the line of duty. A friend of Joe named Steve is the one who bails him out, so he promises to pay him back for all the money he owes him. He also expresses his desire to see Angela, so he can explain that he's not guilty of the charges he's been facing. Meanwhile, Cole and his supposed replacement Andy break in at Angela's apartment, but the woman is not there. When the landlord comes in, Andy beats up the guy forcing him to tell them Angela's whereabouts. But according to the landlord, the woman left a couple of months ago and he doesn't know anything about her current location. At the same time, Cole is experiencing some kind of flashback of his past crimes and tells Andy to stop the beatings. Somewhere else, another NGen employee named Cooper finds Angela staying at her stepbrother's flat. She also expresses her desire to see Joe and gives him a chance to explain, while neither Matt nor her friend Kate is thrilled with the idea. Matt used to work with Joe at the Marine Support Unit, and while at work, an employee asks for help as another co-worker gets attacked on her way to work. Outside the NGen building, the media is in a frenzy for gathering new information about the current status of the test subjects. Peter tries to contain the situation, while Cole reminds him that he's leaving his job by the end of the month. Peter just ignores Cole and proceeds to talk to Michael about Angela and discuss their next move. He also demands to bring Angela in and goes to check another test subject. The man at the table is the first one to receive a dose of RAK, which after a week shows an extreme allergic reaction. The scientist keeps him isolated and noted that his physiology and cellular makeup has dramatically changed just after a couple of days. They administer a viral suppressant to keep him at bay, but there are no changes or signs that the man will be able to go back to normal. Michael adds that they have taken off all patients of the viral suppressants, but there are still no changes and the patient is just lying there. Suddenly, the patient starts convulsing and the power flickers out. When the power goes back, the patient is now standing and he starts attacking everyone inside the room. One of the crew tries to shoot him, but the guy goes ballistic and he gets bitten by the patient. Eventually, Cole is able to subdue the patient and quickly finish him off, while Peter blames the scientist for what just happened. Still figuring out their situation, the doctor that got bitten wakes and bites Cole's hand and acts the same way as the deceased patient. Meanwhile, Angela and Kate watch Cooper from afar, while the man is being rescued by the first responder and another man is being restrained for his cannibalistic behavior. Matt and his partner Jim are out at the docks when they suddenly see an explosion from a nearby building, and their boss running to them and stealing the boat. Confused with the situation, the two go back to their station and realize that everyone is gone and see the chaos happening around through the security cameras. Back at the NGen's headquarter, Cole and Michael are the only two alive while Peter is now infected and locked inside the lab with the others. They figures that the virus spreads through the bites, and thought of all the patients out there that can quickly spread the disease. Cole thoughtfully looks at the bite in his hand and asks Michael if there's anything he can do. The man gives him the three remaining doses of the viral suppressants, which can control the infection for up to 18 hours. When they exit at the door, Andy suddenly shows up and accidentally stabs Michael in the chest because he thought he's one of the infected. When Andy sees the bite wound on Cole's hand, he quickly tries to draw his weapon but Cole is faster to finish him off. Cole then stands up to leave, but he falls back due to sudden extreme pain in his body, which means that the virus is starting to turn him into a cannibal. He quickly grabs the viral suppressant in his pocket and injects it into himself. When he feels back to normal, 
he runs off to the parking garage and is shocked to see fast and athletic cannibals chasing people, and barely manages to drive away. Meanwhile, Angela receives an email from Matt with instructions to meet him somewhere for safety. Angela and Kate immediately leave in her car, and Cole missed the two who just arrives outside of Matt's flat. Angela wants to take Joe with them despite Kate's objections, so the two drives through the city chaos to reach Joe's possible hideout. Cole realizes that Angela is not in the house, so he takes the plate number of her car and searches for it through the chaos. Eventually, he sees them driving through the highway, but his car runs out of gas so he has no choice but to go on foot. Initially, Joe and Steve are unaware of the mayhem, but when they see the state of emergency broadcast on TV, the two men plan to get to Angela. Suddenly, a car shows up outside of the garage they're holding up, and is very glad to see that it is Angela and her friend Kate. She tells them that Matt has an escape plan using a helicopter, but they have to go around the traffic to be able to meet with him. While Joe and Steve argue to stay because they believe it's safer indoors, a man Jeffrey and a woman Lavinia suddenly barge in with an infected chasing them, which Steve quickly shoots. The two tell their story that they were on the way to work when the havoc started at the subway. They relay that a bite from an infected turns people into one of them, and no authorities anymore to help them. Since everyone is running away from the city and heading their way, the group has no other option but to try to reach Matt's location. The problem is that Matt's escape plan is a four-seater helicopter, which will not fit everyone since they are six now. Cole finally locates Angela's car so he quickly tries looking for her. As he walks outside the group's hiding place, the man gets knocked down from pain again so he quickly injects himself with the second dose of viral suppressant. Still in extreme pain, he crawls inside the garage until the suppressant effects kick in since the infected cannibals are already within the area. Cole helps them finish the cannibals but Jeffrey and Steve get bitten in the process. They quickly amputate Jeffrey's bitten fingers, so they might prevent the virus from spreading in his body. Back at the marine support unit, Matt and Jim abandon the station to go to where the helicopter is located. Because their location isn't safe anymore since all their colleagues are now infected. While escaping, Jim gets bitten before they reach the boat and notice that the cannibals are scared of water. Cole shares his plan to get away from the cannibals but his plan isn't solid enough. So Angela shares the helicopter that can fly them out though their number still poses a problem. Cole suggests that the helicopter can make multiple trips and ask for directions on where it is on the map. Steve starts fixing a vehicle they can use, but Joe still opposes the idea of going back into the mess in the city because the helicopter location is in the middle of it. Cole discreetly talks to Angela about the testing and shows his NGen ID, informing her that all those infected cannibals started with the volunteers who turned. He said that the woman might be immune to the sickness and may hold the cure before all of humanity is overrun by the deceased. Angela gets too disturbed to give an answer at the moment and needs some time to think about it all. She tells Joe her predicament and reveals that she is pregnant, while Cole secretly listens to the couple and starts having flashbacks again of shooting someone pregnant in the past. A moment later, he urges everyone to move because they are running out of time. While Joe states that Angela is coming with him and he will not allow her to get experimented on, especially while pregnant. Angela is scared so she tells Kate about her status as the possible cure, but Kate reacts badly while Jeffrey creeps secretly listening to them. After Angela leaves, Jeffrey approaches the terrified Kate and agitates her further to convince her that Angela is dangerous. Not long after, the infected cannibals start coming again and they all have to move fast to escape. Jeffrey and Lavinia devise a plan to lock Angela inside and leave her behind, but she found a window to jump out and Joe saves her and drives away. Cole blows up some gas tank to distract the cannibals but is left behind so he has to follow using a motorcycle. Steve, Kate, Jeffrey, and Lavinia are on foot heading to another hideout but are attacked by one of the infected, who mortally wounded Steve before he can finish off the cannibal. Jeffrey and Lavinia lock them out from the inside, and plan to eliminate them one by one so there can only be four of them to fit in the helicopter. Matt and Jim reach the meetup location for escape, but Jim's condition is getting worse and the virus is spreading too fast inside his body. Matt briefly leaves him in the boat to check the area and is terrified to see that the helicopter has been damaged. Matt radioed their base command and learns that they only have 12 hours left to reach their destination. He forlornly comes back to Jim, but the man is already turned and he's now one of the cannibals who starts chasing him. Eventually, the group meets up again at the new hideout, but Steve is already fading fast and Joe has to say goodbye. When questioned about locking Angela back at their previous location, Jeffrey starts a quarrel between the group and accuses Kate of doing it. Even though Kate denies the accusation, Angela thinks she's guilty due to her reactions earlier. The group leaves together in a van but Jeffrey wouldn't shut up about his concern. Angela reaches her limits and asks Cole to stop the van. 
She tells him that the real monsters are inside the vehicle and they can have the helicopter, while she takes her chances with Joe. Cole assures her that he will help and tries to convince the woman again that she may be the only hope for a cure. Angela reluctantly agrees and sees the incoming cannibals from the side mirror. Cole quickly hits the gas and tries to escape, but there are too many cannibals, and their van crashes at the depot. Kate perishes from the crash, while the others run away and leave her corpse behind. Unaware, Jeffrey's amputated hand starts to show symptoms of the virus spreading, and not long after, it fully spreads into his neck. Joe points a weapon at Cole who tries to take Angela with him, but the woman reasons with her husband that she have to do this so she may help humanity. Cole overpowers Joe and knocks him out, and proceeds to carry him on his shoulders. They reach the helicopter site and find out that it's too damaged to be of use. It is then that Matt shows up and tells them that the infected are scared of water, so their only hope is escaping by boat. While heading for the boat, Jeffrey convulses and starts turning into a cannibal. Cole urges the others to just leave him behind but Lavinia takes a shard of glass and tries to hurt Angela. Joe points his weapon at Lavinia and without a choice, she lets go of Angela. She tries to come with the group on the boat, but Cole refuses because she threatens Angela's life. He then shoots her in the leg and quickly follows the remaining group heading to the boat, while the infected swarms the incapacitated Jeffrey and Lavinia. Unfortunately, Cannibal Jim attacks Matt before they can reach the boat, so Joe quickly tries to help him. In the process, Joe gets bitten in the face and convinces Matt to just leave him behind. Angela says goodbye to her husband and boards the boat with Matt, and when Cole arrives, he too decides to stay since he's also infected. The two men fight the incoming horde of cannibals, but Joe gets overwhelmed by the deceased while Cole is able to escape inside a cargo container. Back to where the film started, Cole finishes his recording stating that Angela is their only hope and can finish what they started. He decides to not use the remaining viral suppressants since he helped makes this chaos possible. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. You can also hit the notification bell and like the video to help the channel out, thank you.